As a long-time Linux user, I have to say that one of the biggest changes recently for me has been the advent of universal packages. So snaps, flat packs, app images. In particular for me, flat packs seem to work the best across multiple distributions. And I've really come to rely on it as a way to get access to software that either isn't available in the repositories or isn't up to date and I need something newer. In many cases, uh, flat packs will have, or flat hub will have the updated version of something. The other thing is that it just tends to work very well on my systems. And I don't know exactly why I've had some trouble with snaps. Um, I think app image is okay in some cases, but I've had problems with them as well. And for the balance between system integration and the amount of effort it takes to manage the packages, keeping things updated, installing, flat packs just seem to work very well for me. And I just wanted to take a second to explain how just in the last day or so, flat packs have made it easier for me to use my computer. So I am on Manjaro Cinnamon and which is Arch based. So I'm using many of the packages I need are already in the Arch repository, but Discord is not. And so I think, okay, there's no Discord in the official repositories. So maybe there's something in the AUR because Arch has the AUR, which is a uh, community driven package system. You can create packages and post them to the AUR and other people can download the package builds and install those on their system. So it's a very convenient way to get access to software that isn't being officially maintained in the repositories, but still works very well on Arch in most cases. So there used to be a Discord package in the AUR. And when I come in now, I notice that it is not here. Now, there are other options, but none of them are just Discord, which is what I was looking for. So my only option would really to be download the source and try to compile it myself, or there's a um, source package that you can download from Discord themselves, or this is where these universal package formats come into play. So I install Flatpak and Arch already has uh, Flathub integrated. So I can use Flathub to install a version of Discord on my computer without having to worry about all of those other issues. So installing that, you can do that in a bunch of different ways. Um, one of the easiest is to just come to Flathub itself and look for the app that you want to install. And then if you have a package manager that a local software management system, so GNOME software, Discover on KDE Plasma, I believe the Mint Software Center and others have integration. So if I were to click install, it's going to download a little file and kick off the install process. I'm not even sure if that works here. Uh, doesn't look like there's integration. So this Manjaro just has PAMAC by default, which is not really a software center per se. It's more of just a package management tool. So you can't use that in this instance. But what you can do is come to the bottom and they actually give you the command line option for installing it. And you can just click and copy that and then paste that into your terminal. And then it will ask you, do you want to install these things? And you would say yes. And one thing about flat packs that I, the only complaint or one of the strongest complaints that I hear about flat packs is that you, there, there's a lot of extra stuff that gets downloaded. So there are the way flat packs, and most of flat packs and snaps work are essentially containerized versions of applications and also the required additional applications that that one that you're targeting needs so so in the case of flat packs if i download or if i install a particular package it might need some sort of backends like the uh, gnome backend or kde platforms or uh, open desktop platform so I already have Discord installed. So let me let me find something else here to install, and you'll see. Um, you know, just for the fun of it, let's do Abby Word. So copy this, paste it into my terminal, and you see it's there is a runtime that's required. So the runtimes themselves, that's where the initial installs of certain things appear to be quite large. Uh, I shouldn't say that. They are quite large. So let's say I'm installing Kdenlive or something that's using the KDE framework 
the run times. It's going to download probably four, five, six hundred megabytes worth of additional components that it needs. But the way this works is the next time you need to install something that uses those components, they're already there. And here you see it's saying that I what branches of these things it needs and how big the downloads will be. So let's say yes. And so it is actually, it does need this GNOME platform. So I haven't installed something on here that needs that. So this is a good example. In this case, it's 373 megabytes. But the next application that I need to use or that needs that runtime will just use the one that's already installed. So there's sort of an upfront requirement of having these runtimes installed. The advantage of it, in my opinion, is that it keeps it separate and it only downloads the pieces it needs. So when you install something on your system natively through a package manager, it's going to go out and get the dependencies and install those. In some cases, depending on what you're installing, there might be there might be dozens of requirements that will have to get installed as well. Now, to me, this gets a little messy because now you've got not only the application that you wanted to install, but you've got a bunch of dependencies as well. And that means that the overhead for updating your system gets larger every time you install something else. And so by virtue of installing this package, now I've installed 15 other packages. And every time there's an update to any of those packages, now they all have to get updated as well. It's usually not an issue because the package managers in Linux are very good at updating and keeping things in sync and making sure that requirements are met and not breaking things. So. I'm not claiming that this is an issue because it's been this way all along and it works perfectly fine. What I'm saying is that if you're trying to run a lean system or you're trying to figure out why do I have all of these packages installed, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to manage and it's just messier in some cases. So the thing I appreciate about these universal package formats is that they're self-contained. They download the pieces of software or requirements or runtimes that they need to run and all of that is maintained through this individual system so so flatpak itself manages those runtimes when it needs to update it will up update them so it's acting almost as a second layer of package management now, some people might see that as an additional complication but to me it's a separation of concern so if i'm using this application and it's only pulling in and needing those pieces that it needs, it's cleaner in my mind that those things are all just in one place together. All right, so here you see now we've installed everything. It, it pulled down what it needed, the GNOME platform, the locale, and then the Abbey Word application itself. So they also give you a run option here. Sometimes, and this may not be true for you, it depends on the desktop environment, depends on the distribution, Sometimes you won't find the entry in your menu right away. It's here for me and, uh, you know, starts right up. But if it wasn't in your menu, you could use this command and, and put this in your terminal and then it will launch the application. Okay, so that's an example of how to install a Flatpak and why I think Flatpaks are, are an advantage. Obviously, in the case of Discord, where there wasn't a native package and there wasn't something in the AUR, it was the most straightforward way to get that installed on the system and running. Uh, performance from Flatpaks and also integration with the system itself, so things like theming and fonts and cursors and just overall look and feel, uh, notifications, access to file system, um, all of the sort of, it, it, to me, it, it works as close to a native package out of any of the options from a universal package standpoint. And um, so that, that's an advantage to me because I've had some issues in particular with snaps where they just don't look right. The theming isn't carried through. I've also had some issues with access to the local file system where I couldn't access files in, let's say, Telegram. Um, I couldn't add a custom background, things like that. Now, that's a bit of a criticism, and I know that the Snap team is working on that, and I'm sure that they will solve that over time, and at that point, maybe I'll use Snaps instead. But for right now, Flatpak, just seems to work better for me. And so that's what I've been using. So that's it. This was a quick video really just intended to show how flat packs are useful to me, 
how they've more or less transformed the way that I've used Linux distributions in the last year or so. And just to reiterate and summarize that point, in the past, you were sort of stuck with what the repositories had available for you, or you had to go out and add a PPA, or you had to go find a dev file, or you had to go... Basically, the same situation exists in Windows, where you need to sort of just go every place and get the individual installer. And it made it challenging to manage those things because they weren't necessarily integrated with the package manager. If there wasn't a PPA or a repository added, then you weren't going to know about newer versions of things. So again, all, all of the same issues that I have with Windows and, and dealing with software on Windows, I would have some of those issues on Linux as well. And with the advent of snaps, flat packs, app images, whatever works best for you, it really makes it so that you can use the operating, the version of Linux, the distribution that works best for your system, or that you like the package manager or whatever the, the thing is that draws you to that distribution. You can use it and still have access to software that might not be available or newer versions of software that aren't available in the default repository. So that wraps it up. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoy these, my rambling on here, uh, please do subscribe. I will make videos as, as I think of goofy things to talk about. Hopefully they're helpful to you. I hope to see you very soon.